On this channel for the longest time, I said I'm not a big fan of ESP style game shows. You take a look at Blank Check, you take a look at Mind Readers, and they were pretty, pretty dire. Now, there are some good prediction style game shows, but they're based around comedy, like Street Smarts, for example, and Oblivious is very fun. But, wait, not Oblivious. I do want to talk about that show later, because it does qualify, so check back in a couple of months, and I'll probably do a video on Oblivious. But for this show, it's got a pretty good pedigree. It's got Monty Hall, he's fresh off of Let's Make a Deal, it's got Jay Stewart, it's produced by Monty Hall himself, so there is some quality to this show. How much quality, you ask? Well, let's find out. Why? Because it's anybody's guess whether it's going to be good or not. Yeah, the show is it's anybody's guess. Just go with it. Somebody in our studio audience can have a chance today to win $5,000 plus this 1977 car as we play It's Anybody's Guess. Debuting on June 13th, 1977, It's Anybody's Guest arrive on NBC. Hosted by Monty Hall, contestants have to guess whether a panel of studio audience members will or won't give the predetermined answer to a question posed by Monty. Well, that's part of the game. Another part is the studio audience panel trying to guess the predetermined answer. So there are some layers here, but do they make for a good show? And do they make for a good show? Well, it's anybody's guess to say, really. But I kind of have an answer to that, and it might be yes, given that the host is Monty Hall. Now, here's the star of our show, Monty Hall. Thank you very much, everybody, and welcome to anybody's guest. And welcome to our challenger and champion, and Paul Vista, all alone up here, waiting to be joined by four people. Monty is the consummate professional. I can't think of a show that he's hosted badly. Here on Anybody's Guess, he plays to his biggest strength, and it's the unpredictable nature he could definitely move around. While the show isn't as hectic as Let's Make a Deal, the unpredictability of the contestants match that of Deal. Monty himself elevates this show more than you would believe. Without Monty, this show I don't think would have made it past the pilot stage. So we know Monty is great, and him being able to do wonders with the show helps. But what about the show itself? Can that be improved upon? Is it better with or without Monty? Well, it's better with him, so let's take a look at the format. The game focuses on the two main contestants at the five-person panel from the studio audience. Monty will read a scenario to the panel that has multiple answers to it, and it's the panel's job to guess the predetermined answer that the staff thinks they will get. Before that, the contestants have to predict if they'll get the predetermined answer or not. They are then given the option for a save for one point or a long shot for two points. If they play it safe, the panel gets five guesses whether it be yes or no. A long shot on a yes means the panel only gets three shots at it. Long shot on no means the contestant has to sweat seven guesses. If the contestant correctly predicts the outcome, they get the points. If not, the opponent gets the points. But the contestants are just the only ones that are playing. In this game, the panel is trying to guess the right answer because if they do, they win a prize. The prizes are important because the person on the panel that wins the most prizes at the end of the show becomes the new challenger on the next show. So the show is a bit multi-layered in its approach. Honestly, there really isn't much to this game, but the big thing was hearing all of the answers from the audience panel and some of them could get quite, quite racy and quite funny at the same time. All right, Glenda. You just pull into the lover's lane, you turn out the lights, what's the next thing you do? You get in the back seat. <laughs> get the feeling Glenda's done this before? That stuff is what turns the show into something that wouldn't be that memorable, into something that could be quite entertaining. I'm alright with the scoring system as well. It rewards risky play with somebody just really going for a long shot on yes. Take that one out of three risk is worth it if you think you can get a question with a simple answer. Plus, with all the personalities on the panel and the contestants, you can get a lot of mileage out of this format. And the bonus round is straightforward enough. The panel presented one final question with two possible correct answers that could be picked off. For each time the panel doesn't come up with one of the correct answers, the contestant has $300 put into a bank. If at any time during the first cycle that the panel gets a correct answer, they win a prize and the contestant's money is at risk. 
Then they must decide whether to take the money or play on. If they get one correct answer by the panel through 10 goes, they win $5,000. What makes this game even more interesting is the card that's available. If the panel fails to come up with one correct answer in the first time around, the card is put into play and the champion removes the correct answer and their money is at risk. If they make it past the second circle without anybody getting that last right answer, not only do they win the 5000 but they win the brand new car. It might sound confusing much like the game itself, but because of how much is going on in this one, but it works wonders and it's kind of easy to follow along. At the end, it's a pretty decent show. It's not going to blow anybody away, but there's entertainment to be had here. Monty is still Monty, and it's just a nice little piece of game show lore. So that was It's Anybody's Guess. It was okay. I liked it enough. But why did, was it short-lived? Well, it was in a time slot where it was going up against some pretty big competition. You had Family Feud going on on the ABC, and you have Love of Life going on on CBS. And the sh with those two shows being as dynamic as they are, you have to succeed. And unfortunately, It's Anybody's Guess didn't. So third place in the ratings, wasn't doing too well. It got cancelled for, I believe, another, yeah, it did get cancelled for another short-lived show in Knockout. And that will also be covered on a future 26 weeks or less. So that's going to do it for me. I thank everybody for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this nice little look at it's anybody's guess. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment on a show that you want us to feature on a fe on 26 Weeks or Less. And subscribe to the channel. Click that bell to get notifications on when a new video is going to be put up every Wednesday or Sunday. And if you really want to support the show, become a Patreon backer at patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. One dollar a month gets you access to all of the videos one day before they go up on YouTube. I mean the big Sunday videos that go up on YouTube, you get to see them Saturday. Well, that's going to do it for me. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye, everyone.